In this video, we take a look at lossy versus lossless compression. So first of all, let's start with what the actual purpose of compression is overall. Well, the whole point of compressing files is to reduce their size, reduce their download times, reduce the storage requirements on secondary media, and to make best use of available bandwidth when transmitting data. The last point, make best use of bandwidth, is particularly important. Given the vast amounts of data that's now sent and streamed over the internet every day, making efficient use of bandwidth can be critical. By reducing a file's size as much as possible, compression, you can considerably speed up the time it takes to transmit. Compression achieves its goals by reducing the overall size of a file as much as it possibly can. There are two different methods for this, lossy compression and lossless compression. Both reduce the overall size of files, but in quite different ways. When a compressed file arrives at its destination, it needs to be uncompressed so it can be read again. So let's start by looking at an image. Well, with an image, the number of different colors increase the size of the file. Here, we only need one bit per pixel to store two different colors, because a zero can represent black and one can represent white. Here, we see we're now requiring two bits for each pixel to store the fact that we've got a combination of four different colors. And now you can see we're requiring three bits for every pixel in order to store one of possible eight colors. And this is known as the color depth. One way to reduce the file size is to store a lower number of colors or to store larger areas of pixels as a single color. Both techniques will reduce the quality of the compressed image. So these are known as lossy compression methods. With images and indeed audio and video, a small reduction in quality is not normally very noticeable, certainly by the human eye. Therefore, lossy compression is considered an acceptable compromise of quality versus file size and download time. Here on the screen are two images, and it's quite hard to tell at first which one is the original and which has been compressed, despite the significant reduction in file size. Another approach doesn't sacrifice any quality during compression at all, and this is lossless compression. In this image, there are several large areas of white pixels. Instead of storing every pixel with the same binary pattern, we could store the binary for white, followed by the number of white pixels that occur in a row. With lossless compression, we can reduce the size of an image, but we are able to restore the image in its full, original quality when we uncompress it. However, this method, of course, is only effective on images that have large areas of continuous colors. Therefore, lossless compression is ideal for any vector style images, things like cartoons, logos and icons. But it becomes far less effective for full color photographs, where there are very few blocks of continuous repeating color. File type often determines which method of compression is best, and indeed there are some files which simply are not suitable for lossy compression at all. For example, text documents and executable programs must not lose any of the data during the compression process. For these files, we have to use lossless compression, as we need to be able to get back to the original file in its entirety. So let's just summarize now between lossy versus lossless. So compression reduces the size of the file, makes it quicker to transfer and takes up less space. With lossy compression, some data is lost and can't be recovered when the file is compressed. 
it slightly reduces the quality but significantly reduces the file size and this is very suitable for image audio video and other types of multimedia with lossless compression however none of the original data is lost so the original file can be recreated exactly when it's uncompressed this makes it suitable for executable program files and text-based documents having watched this video you should be able to answer the following key question. What is the difference between lossy and lossless compression?